everyone, welcome to our first very experimental movie review analysis thingamajig. We haven't even named it yet. I'm Sonic Sons. And, and I'm Sith King Zero. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking in a sort of radio style voice. I don't yeah. necessarily talk that way. I'm talking in my normal voice. <laughs> <laughs> the normal halfway Darth Vader voice. Uh, I swear to God, it's not intentional. <laughs> my voice has always been like this. That's fine. I'm sure Dude, it's you should have heard me once I hit puberty. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Must have been intimidated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, we were thinking of reviewing Man of Steel, or analyzing it, or whatnot. Uh, just talking about parts we liked and didn't like. Yep, that's good. We're not going to be like SF Debris, where we bring out the facts and charts and nah, he quotations. Nah, he probably did that already. Uh, that no, he, did. he hasn't, actually. Oh, he will soon. Or, or like the Nostalgia Critic, who's just... Ah, oh, this is my opinion. I am randomly angry. Well, the whole point is that he's over the top and funny that way. Well, yes. Granted. So, if we come up with a, with a nice comedy script, maybe we'll try that too at some point. I don't know. I hmm. enjoyed the ranks. So what, would you, what would be the opposite of nostalgia? The novelty critics? Or something yes. like that? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of want... I kind of wanted to be the a, the classic cartoon critic, you know, that way, we, I mean, the cartoon critic, just so that way we could review My Little Pony and oh, Transformers and like all sorts of classic stuff. You but, know, Nostalgia has done a couple of cartoons. Uh, yeah, but we'd be more thorough. Yeah. Maybe like the the kid, the kid critic. Hmm. No, no. Something. Well, what he did was he only did like the first five episodes. Okay, look, of a this is cartoon. this is clearly not the review of the movie. Ah, we can that's discuss okay. this later. This is all experimental to begin with. Okay, yeah. So, the movie we are looking at today is Manos, The Hands of Fate. <laughs> oh, no! <Okay>. Just kidding. <laughs> Although I would have preferred the soundtrack from that one. Oof. Because it was quieter? Well, yeah. Uh, the, real movie, quieter. <laughs> the real one we are reviewing today is Man of Steel. Basically, the new Superman movie. Oh, I thought it was a sequel to Man of Iron. Which I think there was a short-lived superhero called that, who actually predated Superman. Uh, Thor actually calls Tony that. In well, the yeah, comics. okay, yeah, no. Man but of Iron. Before Iron Man, I mean, before that modern era when they came. I mean, modern is in the '60s, and there was one from like the '40s. I saw it was like the Man of Iron. I was like, well, they're preceding the Man of Steel. <laughs> Next up, Man of Platinum. All right, so new da, Superman da, movie. Da, um, da, 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 uh, new Superman movie, um, darker, grittier than your darker, than yeah. old school Superman. Um, well, yeah, but then again, you know, the old school Superman was, I won't say Adam Westish. No, it was not. It, it, it was... It was very lighthearted. It had a goal that it wished to set out to do. You will believe a man can fly. Yeah. And, you know, I, I honestly, I kind of miss that feeling. Like, I can see the, the grit of the things and how that's a neat angle. And but... the modern world has changed. Our world is genuinely a scarier place than it was back in the... Days when everyone had nukes pointed at each other. Well, now it's scarier <laughs> because, well, we don't use nukes, so the bad guys have to get more creative, and we don't know who they are. Yeah, well, you can debate them. Run for your lives! Why are you listening to this review? <laughs> Duct tape yourself inside your house and stockpile, like... Cans of things. Cans of cans. That should be a thing. Canception. Um, um, yeah, I, I mean, we have a debate whether the world is scary or not, but the, the, the fictional world is certainly scarier to match in comparison to what it was before. Um, and there's been, you know, a fair amount of grit in media in general recently. Which, you know, I don't mind. Which I mean, I, I like a little bit of grit. It's, it's mm -hmm. like seasoning. Yeah. Um, it has a touch of realism and drama. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, like, um, uh, yeah, it's fun to watch the superheroes flying around in their capes or their suits. Mm -hmm. But then you get, like, into what's it like? What What is the real problems? Like, I've seen comics where spider-man complains do you have any idea how expensive web fluid is and how hard it is yeah, for me to yeah. make that was a major uh revolution on stan lee's part that he made his characters have like real problems and they like they would get the flu or something mm -hmm. like stuff would actually happen and then like tony stark became an alcoholic yeah yeah that's a thing for him. um and like they have actual they... Imagine superman is an alcoholic that'd be awful <laughs> uh how i mean he's got like he probably has super metabolism. Well, I meant if he actually got drunk like a regular alcoholic. And do you he still really has want super to see? Strength. Do you really want to see what a Superman would be like? I said <laughs> that would be awful. 
Alternately, that would be awesome. <laughs> would be like awful awesome. <laughs> I was the first coined word. There we go. We're only a few minutes into this. <laughs> oh god. I think I may use that word. That's a pretty. Good but word. grit, yeah. Awful, awesome. So grit, but you know. Uh, with any trend, it's neat to see the counterpoint. There's one great thing Star Wars did when it came out. All the movies before it had been so gritty because of the Vietnam War and everyone was feeling down. And then came Star Wars and it was like, freaking save the princess, blow up the bad guys, good and evil, do it, man. <laughs> Red know? lasers and green lasers. Red lasers and green lasers, you know. Uh, so it, it became, it was awesome on its own points, but it was even better for that contrast. And what I saw in Superman, the new Superman, was not contrast, it was continuance. It was a little like, okay, you know, we're continuing to do the gritty mode. And that struck me a little more because Superman, say, compared to Batman, is the more idealistic one. You know what I mean? Yes. When Batman goes gritty, you're like, oh, that makes total sense. Because it's Batman. It's he Batman. works in, yeah. The city he works in is a garbage-filled hellhole that makes you extremely surprised why anyone lives there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seriously, to walk down the street, you gotta be, like, wearing a riot shield with a gas <laughs> mask on. <laughs> It'd be like, ah, oh, I'm the Joker, I'm releasing... <laughs> oh, wait, everyone's wearing the gas mask so ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh, darn, well, try again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. But Superman, I think one of the best ways to demonstrate this is look at the difference between Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated mm, Series back that's in the 90s. That's a good one, yeah. uh, Batman had kind of this retro 50s gothic architecture yeah. with constantly red skies. There were police zeppelins with searchlights. Lots to do with light down. and shadow, you know, especially in that the intro when they play the music. Mm -hmm. you know, Very all shadows. I love that. Yeah, and uh, there's... The, the commissioner has to go up in secret on the roof and activate a signal to summon the city's yeah. only hero. It's not a great visual, just like the guy on the roof with like, you know, just waiting. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And then Batman, he's like, I don't know how you're going to catch him, Batman. Turns around and Batman's gone. Except when Azrael, what's his name? Azrael? Yeah. Took over. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that, but. Oh, you didn't see that? No. There's totally a moment where he's like, because he's, he, Azrael's in the bat suit, but Gordon doesn't know it's, it's changed personalities, you know, like mm -hmm. they've changed people. So he's totally doing the debriefing and Gordon looks away like, yeah, well, and he's sitting like this. All, oh my God. What? You're still there. Normally I turn around and you're gone. Oh, well, uh, I wasn't sure our conversation was finished. Never stopped you before. Okay, okay, I'll just leave then. I'll just, <laughs> just like. <laughs> I love when someone pulls a Batman exit on Batman. That's yeah, just more... yeah. In Kingdom Come, there was like a scene where uh, Superman left the cave in a real big hurry. Yeah, Batman turns around, he's, Superman's gone. Huh, so that's what that feels like. <laughs> yeah. And that's just great. Yeah. But um, Batman. Batman's the great. Okay, in the. In the cartoons. Uh, in the cartoons, yeah, uh, it's, it's gothic architecture. It's very dark, red skies, mm -hmm. zeppelins. Superman, it's, his world is like if you walked out, in the animated series, it's like if you walked out into the World's Fair. Yeah, and it's always noon. Yeah, it's always noon. It's never night. And if it's night, it's somehow always starry in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Even though, you know, the light pollution shouldn't really do that. This is like the, the place angels go... Oh, when they have to use the bathroom. Because it's just so <laughs> clean. This is where the public toilets that's don't even smell. But, and it, it, it goes to the, the um, not just the environments, but the, the method of action. Because Superman flies, you know, without any support. He has a cape billowing. He has this strength, yeah, purity to him. He, he, his yeah. chest is like as wide as two or three people, <laughs> depending on how badly he's drawn. Right. And then, and then Batman, of course, is all sneaky. And there's, you know, more grit to that. Obviously. He's, yeah, you know, he's like pops out of a sewer or something and grabs somebody. You know, whatever he does. More uh, often he pops out of the sky, actually. Or nowhere. Really, that's it. He comes out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, one thing I do have to make a quick note mm. of... Okay, we'll get to that actually later. But, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, this movie was a bit too gritty for Superman. He that's is the what we're getting around to, yeah. He's the idealistic one. Um, now, him saving lives. That is completely within right. character. And that, that's the thing. Him so, giving himself up for the sake of humanity. Yeah. That was... Compl oh, we probably should have made a warning that there were going to be spoilers. Ah, that's all right. We can add it at the beginning if we want to. But, um... Uh, yeah, him giving himself up for mm -hmm. the sake of the human race. Mm -hmm. That is completely in character. Mm -hmm. He he did that back in 92. Right, when so... He, he, we killed Doomsday, but got Mutual killed in return. Right, right, that's true. That was 92? Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. But 
And I admit there was a lot of destruction when he died there, too, because he was fighting something that killed <laughs> him. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was fine. So, so the, the question, it's not that Superman got gritty in that really bad, you know, what, the, what are the, the, the... Where is Rachel Parker? Right, Where right, right. is Rachel? The, blah, the, blah, 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 blah. Well, I, it's cool when Batman does it. But uh, when, when, it, when the, really, the dark age of comics came and everything had to be super gritty and you can imagine Superman like scowling all the time and cussing and stuff like they didn't do having that. spikes on you know. his cape for some yeah, reason. Yeah. So they I didn't don't think do... Superman really went through the dark ages that well. I mean, uh, as much. I, I haven't really heard many complaints from Linkara at least about uh, yeah. dark age See, Superman. There you go. So, so of course it could be that like he turned. I remember like there was this one series where he. Uh, turn into a being of pure ionic energy or something. Yeah, but it wasn't dark then either, if I recall. It yeah, but it was, like, it was just I have stupid. different superpowers, yeah. I believe that's the TV Tropes new page for, like, canon discontinuity or something. At one point it was like, yo, red Superman and blue Superman with energy powers! And it's like, everyone just forget about this. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so they didn't go crazy dark in his personal. He's, he's saving people, he's whatever. But the details of how it's presented gave it a grit that felt sort of wrong. Uh, shaky cameras. <laughs> God, I I do not like shaky cameras. I understand yeah. if it's yeah. used like Sparing. sparingly, mm -hmm. that can convey a sense of, oh shit, yeah. there's something going wrong. Yeah. But in a major budget motion picture, it makes me think, oh God, the cameraman tripped. <laughs> well, especially when it's all the time. Uh, and, yeah. and it's, it's not even during just in the action scenes, it's also during the, the when Clark is a kid, and it's, it's a smaller shake, but it's still shaking. And the idea is to be like, oh, this is the real world. I'm sitting there like, ah, oh, the camera's shaking still. The camera's shaking still. Yeah, we, we don't want to... We're in this not to be in the real world. We're in this because we want to see a man in spandex beating the crap out of people using fists that he got well, from well, yeah. parents. I mean... Well, the, he didn't get his... The, well, I guess he got his fists from his parents. <laughs> but, but not, not in the literal not, yeah, sense. Yeah, I know what I mean, you know, various elements of realism are, are more okay than the shaky cam, which just kind of okay. gives me nausea, like, you know. The military being suspicious of Superman. Yeah. In context, that makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. You know, that's a, that's a level of grit that's, you know, acceptable, because mm. he's an alien. Uh, these big bad aliens have just said, oh, we're going to blow up the planet if you don't turn over this alien. Mm -hmm. Who knows? This guy could be just like them. Right. No, that guy, for all they know, Superman is the Zod. He's the villain who's going to conquer the world, you know? That would uh, yeah. be a nice reversal, actually. <laughs> uh, there, there was a comic called Superman Red Sun. That's right. I heard it. Where, like, um, it turns out that Krypton, Krypton is just, like, Earth in the year 5 billion or I so. I forgot about that part, yeah. Where the Earth's sun has turned red and... Uh, so they send him back in time, and he lands in Soviet Russia. Yeah, in Soviet Russia, Superman. <laughs> and it turns out Lex Luthor is the hero that saves the world. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> but um, nice little shard there. Um, so, but yeah, okay. So, so the other bits of the um, of the presentation, the the cinematography, not cinematography, as I said two days ago, <laughs> cinematography. The most delicious type of camera ever. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I was saying something about oh. grit. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, the Superman getting detained, that's a level of grit that's acceptable. Hmm. You know, that's... I mean, yeah, we like a little grit. Seasoning. Yeah, yeah. It's when, like, everything is gritty and everything sucks. Like, um... Yeah, we, we expect, like, there to be collateral damage when superheroes fight. Hmm. And, yeah, it's magically cleaned up the next panel. Except this time it wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but... Again, we go to movies for escape from the horrors of reality. Mm, so oh, maybe true. not horrors, but mm. you get what I'm trying to say here. Potentially, potentially. You were saying, sorry. So the cinematography bit, the way they filmed it, so I heard yeah, there, there is no um, bullet time in this movie. There's no slow-mo, and that was enforced by the director to really get the idea across of how fast they are and how dangerous they are. Which and, I, I do like. The, the fight scenes were extremely well choreographed. It was like watching... A, like uh, Dragon Ball Z in real life. Right. Except, you know, with less screaming and 80 episode builds up for something <laughs> stupid that never happens. Well, they were well choreographed, right. But remember, we were both like plugging our ears at how loud it was and, that's, and that's, feeling the shake. That's audio. We'll get to that and later. That's true. But feeling the shake of it and feeling... Uh, if, if, if they had some bullet time stuff, uh, not with actual bullets and stuff, but if they had, if they had moments of slow-mo, you could have draw much more of that iconicness out of Superman. You know, here, here's... Maybe like a slow-mo of, like, him moving forward, seemingly at, at super slow speed, 
while a laser from from General Zod's eyes shoots towards her, him grabbing her, hmm. and like his cape swirling around him as like he crouches and boom, <laughs> and he, even you in could, slow motion he just teleports out of there. Hmm. You he's could move in that yeah. fast. You could do that. I was thinking even more of the moments when he's he's not even moving much, and you just like where he pauses for half a second, make it four seconds for the actual viewer. Because you can do these moments where the he's facing down the enemy, you know, or and or looking at the destruction, or looking at the world ship, or the and you want to just back off, sort of, and uh, furthermore, literally zoom out and watch the whole picture for a second. This is this big battlefield we have. Yeah. But we had instead the camera was in his face a lot of the time. Like he, we, he'd be okay. bursting through the side of a building, and you're like, oh, look at all the debris of that building around his eyebrows, and I'm like, I need to. But I need to zoom out. I need to see you what know? he's smashing through. He could have smashed through a puppy, for all I know. <laughs> well, that stone would Stone puppy. A stone puppy. There you go. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it didn't give a whole big sense of scope. It didn't, yeah, that's right. That sense of scope, which which is important for that iconicness of Superman. If you're going to do, like, Punisher, you know, I can get that being everyone's face all the time and, like, what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, because the Punisher's... Shot. The Punisher's it's grit, you know? The Punisher's role is very small. Yeah. It's room to room, alley to alley, street to street. That's how he has to clear every block yeah. of of uh, the scum of gangs. And more and more so. But even Superman the is a of it. Yeah. Superman's a global hero. Hmm. He he. Uh, I think in one recent comic storyline, and I could be wrong about this. Please <laughs> don't yell at me. Uh, he renounced his U. Superman renounced his U.S. citizenship I that, yeah. because. He doesn't just cover the U.S. He right. covers the entire planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't like go, oh, there's an asteroid heading straight for... Oh, it's going to land in <laughs> India. Fuck those guys. <laughs> that I mean, would be a great <laughs> example for superdickery.com. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> Superman is a global... His scale is global. He could hear a butterfly's wings in Madagascar right. in the middle of a thunderstorm. Theoretically. In depending, Nebraska. Depending on the writer. In Madagascar, in Nebraska. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, from Nebraska. Oh, yes. Okay. I thought you meant it was in two places at once. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's Granted how many superpowers Superman said, <laughs> which is one thing I did like. They didn't give him a stupid amount of powers. They gave him his regular amount of powers. How many more do they normally give him? Uh, you really don't want to read anything from the Silver Age. <laughs> okay, true, but whoever filmed the Silver Age, like, even well, the old I mean, school movies were like, screw that. Okay, the old movies <laughs> had a memory-erasing kiss. All right, kiss. they did. Yeah, you're right, they did. They did. Uh, uh yeah, but they didn't, they didn't give him freeze breath. They didn't give him um, the memory-erasing yeah. kiss, which was still stupid. You know, the original cut was he was going to go back in time to undo that. Which would okay. make, make a little more sense because they established that in the first movie. Which was still stupid. Which is still, but it'd be the same stupid twice, and maybe that's a bit better. <laughs> okay, yeah, but, okay, well, that's one thing I do ask from movies, or any type of fiction. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have bullshit in your movies, be consistent about your bullshit. Yes, yes, consistent bullshit. Put that on a poster. <laughs> <laughs> if you have bullshit, at least be consistent. <laughs> But they didn't give him a stupid amount of powers. They gave him laser vision, they gave him super strength, they gave mm. him flight. Mm, yeah, well, yeah. he'd better have super strength than flight, or I don't know who we're watching. Well, but yeah. original Superman didn't have flight. Oh, that's true. That, that, he that just was, jumped around a I'm lot. I'm going to call that early installment weirdness right there. I mean, yeah, now they kind of hand wave that as, like, um, uh, Superman's powers building slowly. Yeah, also just retconning when they feel like it. I mean, it's been 70 years of comics. Some of these things are just vanishing away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But there, one thing I didn't like about the powers, uh, Superman, it took years and years of hard work and training and dedication for him hmm. to build up the level of control it took not to slaughter everyone every time he waves his hand hmm. or to blow open the world with his heat vision or, or to f drown out mentally all the noises that he hears constantly. That's the one they established, yes. Yeah, General Zod and his crew of Psycho Kryptonians are like, hmm, we've been here for ten minutes. Yep, well, we're used to it now. Let's take over the world! <laughs> yeah, I, I could give them... Dude, super... They, 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 did, they did put an explanation for that, though. These guys are military types who know all about, you know, focusing their senses and stuff. So I was a little like, ah, oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but, well, yeah, but that's within their own unique brand of focusing their senses. I mean... 
yeah, you can focus your senses normally, but on the other hand, you suddenly there's a difference between focusing, focusing your senses and learning how to turn off heat vision. <laughs> Yeah, but what were they going to do? Zod steps off the ship and he's like, Ah, oh, my heat mission! Wait, crap! That would have been awesome, that actually. That would be a great how it should have ended. That should be totally the thing. And he like, spends the whole movie just wandering around in the background. Ah, ha, ha, heat mission! Or, or better better yet, like the, the first time they do that, they, they screw up. and they, So they have to wear like special suits for like the rest of the movie to prevent themselves from becoming too powerful until they can adjust. Hmm. And then, like, at the end, Superman ruptures their suits and, like... Well, they did play on the ruptured suit thing, yeah. Yeah, they did. It only disabled him temporarily, though. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Superman had the training from his parents. Yeah. And then he's... You're not going to be able to get... Oh, you're, when you're an adult and you're used to only hearing, you know, your own voice or mm-hmm. the sounds of your spaceship for 30 years, when it's pretty quiet... You're not suddenly going to be able to get used to hearing uh, every single thing that is happening on the face of the Earth at the same time. Yeah. Though I say Superman 2 had this same... Uh, it was, our Superman 2 was worse, actually, in terms of Zod shows up from the Phantom Zone. Boom! Powers. Okay, well... No discussion at all. <laughs> uh, granted, that was a... That, well, they weren't trying for a more serious yeah, feel. That's true, that's true. They were... Uh, they were still in that you will believe a man can fly. We will, we can suspend our disbelief for that. We can carve Mount Rushmore into our own bases with heat vision, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking that might have been a little... But that was silly, <laughs> Yeah. but it fit with the tone of the movie. Mm, the this one is trying to say, we are the serious Superman film. Yeah. We are the reboot. We are how things are going to be from now on. Mm. And things are going to be played deadly serious. If there's a city oh, wrecked, that's... it's going to be wrecked forever. People die, they ain't coming back. So there wasn't much blood. That's, that, that's modern mo- mo- superhero movies do that. There's no blood anywhere, is there? Yeah, good People point. always get knocked aside and like, that's cool, I'm not bleeding. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Um, yeah. But... Yeah. Uh, but th- this is supposed to be the serious one. Mm. So think? when they just casually throw aside, you know, things that they seem to... Ind- it's like I said earlier. If you're going to give me bullshit, at least keep it consistent. Mm-hmm. see that. Um, let's see, actually, let's see. Oh, I, I, was, I was thinking myself a question the other day. Were you supposed to have more humor in it? Uh, Man of Steel or Batman Begins? Because I think maybe it was Batman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow, that's that's fairly dark then for Man of Steel. Then <laughs> you're actually less humor. I mean, it wasn't much in Batman, but there was you know the nice coat, you know, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was the Falcone was tied to the thing, and he made like the bat signal, which was sort of dark but funny at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and then, then like at the end, they call back to that, and I loved that. Oh yeah, I couldn't find any signal. mob bosses. Yeah, we, we didn't have any mob bosses to tie to the <laughs> tie to the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Superman, I don't know if they had any jokes. I mean, even when Clark is a kid, it's all about how hard it is to be a Kryptonian. Uh, you know, I get what seeing that the guy has winter fresh gum in his pocket is that a joke? Kind of. Yeah, so he saw him through the... Okay, I guess that was a little bit of a joke, just to show... Yeah, yeah, I'm like a god to you people. Yeah. (laughs) Bend down! No, the one joke was, uh, welcome to the planet at the end. Which I did like that line. Yeah, that was was a nice... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Uh, But here we're getting into the thing that really pissed me off. The planet? The audio. Oh, how did we get into that? Or did you, you got us into that. Okay, I well, thought I, I figured, mentioned it. Well, the, the way our conversation was going, it would take another hour before we got on top. Okay, okay, go ahead. We've just ahead. been, this started out from... This is still pretty good randomness, though. This yeah. is processed randomness. But the audio, dear God, the audio, and do not just tell me that it was the theater's fault. How do you know? Because I've, like I said, I've talked to other oh, people. Oh, you talked to other people. Okay. I've talked to other people from different theaters. Mm. If you have autism... Well, here's something for you regular people. Although, considering you're watching this, you're probably not too regular. Mm. I'd advise getting more fiber into your diets. <laughs> See, that was a joke. Superman <laughs> lacked those. <laughs> but, uh, if you have autism, there are some side effects. 
Now, I'm not going to go through all of them, because, yeah. partially because... I, yeah, that and I don't know. One of them is that our senses can sometimes get overwhelmed. Mm. We lack... We're like the crypt- how the Kryptonians should have been. Oh my gosh. We, we can have a very <laughs> hard Autistic time. Autistic Zod. <laughs> Autistic Zod. I will destroy you, son of jor but only after I count every single brick in Metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Superman, you're supposed to go this way, not that way. That's a change in my routine. But, um, okay, sorry. If you have autism, one of the things that you can have a problem with is filtering out distractions and noise. Hmm. I can only stay at parties and at big events for only so long hmm. because I can't hear anything. It sounds like standing inside of a wind tunnel. Yeah. That um, would sound bad, yeah. Yeah. Well... Now imagine that with a jillion explosions going off so loud that yeah. that the ceiling tiles are rattling, as well as very high pitched noises, which I am very sensitive to, mm-hmm. going off all around me. Um, zero slow scenes. That's another thing we're yeah, gonna have to yeah. cover. And that's the same, but with the slow mo, it would also be quiet, wouldn't it? You know? Yes. Uh, no slow scenes to, or quiet scenes to. Help, you know, well, take in, us down. In, in the I second literally... half, anyway, because the first half had a few slow scenes in the flashbacks. But, but yeah. the second half, in it the, was like, yeah. In the last half hour of the movie, I yeah. literally had my hands covering my ears the entire time. Yeah. I complained to the friggin' manager of the theater. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, put my, I also plugged my ears. I, I was not as sensitive as you, but I was like, yeah, this is really loud, isn't it? And like, yeah, hey, I, I can still this hear guy... it with my ears plugged. Yeah, this guy... <laughs> This guy, not autistic. Not autistic, but oh, it yeah. was loud. And that, I've been to many movies. I saw Avengers. We saw Avengers. Yeah, we, we saw were both okay Avengers. with Avengers, even. Yeah, we were, we were okay know? with Avengers. When a movie starring the Incredible Hulk <laughs> oh, and space dragons eating New York <laughs> and a nuclear explosion <laughs> is quieter than your movie, yeah, yeah, you have failed. And you know something? <laughs> that just brings up another great moment of, of the slow bit in the action. You know when he's delivering the nuke? And he, like, tries to call Pepper before it goes off and everything. Yeah. And, and, and there's this moment of quiet, you know? Before, yes. The, Superman did not have that for, like, a full half hour at the end. It was like, frick, frick it, frick it, frick it. And then there's that one moment of quiet where he talks to Lewis, and they kiss, and we're like, oh, we can unplug our ears. It's like, oh, frick! And then Zod. I'm Zod's back! <laughs> and I'm sure for some people that was, like, the most exciting thing ever. I'm sure for some people they loved it, but for us but, it was just like, oh, guys. Dude. Oh, we, I can't. <laughs> dude, I actually got action movie fatigue. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's something my mom gets. She she can't watch Lord of the Rings because she claims it's 30 hours of bearded, smelly guys beating each other up. Yeah, not fans always Three hours, have three hours not 30 hours. <laughs> you have to watch it ten times. But I finally understood what she meant. Mm, I yeah. At some point, I just stopped caring. Just end the fight already. <laughs> I was so happy when Zod's neck was finally snapped because it meant they would shut up and stop <laughs> fighting. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't much of a, of a aftermath to that either. There was a little bit. He cries. People talk about this, how gritty he was because he killed somebody, and I could see why he killed somebody. But the aftermath, he he cries for like maybe ten, twenty seconds, and then next scene, it's like three weeks later, and he takes down a drone. And you could have had this whole like aftermath of the battle thing, you know. You, people need slow scenes. Yeah. Kids need slow scenes just so like they can process right. what has just happened. Not that kids should see it since PG thirteen, but yeah, I know what you mean. Well, yeah. people are going to bring their kids anyway. Yeah. It's a Superman movie. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But, uh, well, the the kind of the dichotomy of that kind of the the not dichotomy um harmony balance n- no back no and forth. split in two two different things that are opposite of each other. I think that's dichotomy. Oh well, isn't it? The just this the disparity between ah, those two disparity. scenes kind of got kind of annoys me though. Hmm. Um. And we're back on the action scene again, but mm. um, Superman gets blasted through like a thou- hundred buildings, mm. and they start collapsing on top of one another. Mm. And then he punches Zod, and he goes through another fifty buildings, yeah. and they all start collapsing on top of him. Yeah. And Zod like throws a car that was moving thirty seconds before, and Superman yeah. blasts it into oblivion with his heat beam. I hope no one was in there. <laughs> yeah, and and then like um, uh, oh no, a single white American family is in danger. <laughs> I have to kill now. <laughs> Oh, screw you, what? Superman. Well, no, what you... was different about, like, before? Where Why couldn't you have done this, taken the battle to the Arctic? Um, 
Hmm. Or, or somewhere outside of the you city where you wouldn't that have would, had a jillion casualties. That would casualties. make sense. Because at first, right, there's, there's the spaceship is there. And like, mm-hmm. okay, it's not moving right now. But then they blow it up. And for the aftermath with Zod, I could see a, a, a thing of him flying away and Zod is chasing him and they take it to the Arctic, you know. And yeah. that could be a thing. And then he, and that would actually kind of be kind of be neatly symbolic, wouldn't it? Because finally he kills Zod in like the middle of you know grand white landscape, whatever type of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, the only thing it would lack was that uh, that one civilian thing. Um, but you know what you could do if you want to keep the civilians in, just go to a remotely populated area and oh wait, there are a few people here. Not the Arctic, but it's on a mountain or something. Well, they technically already did that with Smallville, which I was astounded how much destruction. Th- that town is never recovering, man. <laughs> it's like, everyone get inside and lock the doors. Seconds later, oh, sorry, we just blew up an A-10 warthog next to your house, so I hope you're okay. Oh, wait, you don't have super invulnerability. Is warthog... Di- See, I can think of warthog and I think halo. Is there a different warthog I can Yes, the A-10 warthog. It's what is uh, that? It's, um, it's a very powerful military aircraft, okay. uh, usually used for bombing runs. Is it, is it a jet? Yeah. Okay, it's a jet. I'll I'll show you a picture later. Okay, cool. So yeah, jets. They're bad. Um, or they explode even rather. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, there was there was not any until that moment. Right, there was not any thought, any well, not much thought anyway of civilians. And you could excuse it sort of as okay, it was, the fight was going so fast, no one had time to. In think, the moment, sort of. yeah. In the moment, heat of the ba- heat of battle. That's right. that's understandable. People make mistakes in the heat right. of battle all the time. All right, but then, if so, you might want to move it up with a aftermath of the battle scene that really gets into how bad it was and how bad we feel. That could about have been it. an awesome, quiet moment. Like yeah. Superman walks through the destroyed remains of his town, and people are staring at him in horror because, oh, my laundromat's destroyed, and oh wait, my entire family was is now under right. the train that is in the laundromat. Right, and then and then it, we could make a moment of heartwarming out of it because everyone would be freaked out for a second. And then maybe like a little kid or something would come by and say thank you. You know what I mean? And people would, thank you for blowing up my no, house. We, did, we, we did, needed to remodel. We did save the world. That was the thing. Right? But he didn't. Save everyone the... could see that starship that was freaking up the thing. And they okay, I was these... talking about the Smallville battle. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the frigging. Yeah, no, no, no. Smallville. Smallville battle. was. Okay. Yeah, that could have been a nice quiet moment. That could have been a nice quiet bit of a moment. tearjerker. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking Metropolis. Guys. Also, why did they have to land the spaceship in the middle of Metropolis? Because they're dicks. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, you could have landed it. You know, it's You've odd. seen it works yeah. in, the, you see it works in the ocean with the Indian Ocean one. Why not make it so like a, one end is in the Atlantic and the other end is in the Pacific? Well, how would that help them, though? They are the villains. What do they care? Um, see, I see. Uh, it would be harder to notice that happening. Yeah, I mean, the freaking world-ending thing is already on our satellites before it even okay, lands. Okay, good point. But I'll give you a, a, a different point, though, on that same sort of deal, was Superman in this continuity is not established yet as the hero of Metropolis. Yeah, why was... So Metropolis is just picked Metropolis? at random. <laughs> you, know? you could have chosen Coast City, which in the Superman comics was destroyed by Superman villains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, granted, then you'd have to deal with Green Lantern, so... Yeah, but... I mean, maybe maybe they're trying to do it backwards. The reason he becomes the hero of Metropolis is because he saved it in his first big outing as a superhero, and then thereafter sort of adopts it as his own. You but then they could have explained that though after the fact. They could have been like, "This is my new city." I don't know. Uh, yeah, although one one kind of nasty thought occurs to me. You know, if if New Orleans is still recovering from the attack, I mean, from the from Hurricane Katrina in some yeah. ways. Yeah, Metropolis is not recovering anytime soon. Though, on the flip side, you do have a Superman to help you rebuild it. Yeah, that's a point. So if you learn super carpentry, then you can... That was probably one of his abilities in the Silver Age. I bet it was. Um, but yeah, you know what? I, I put this on the TV Scopes uh, head scratchers. I called it Nuke the Indian Ocean. Because if they have the two world builders, and one of them is over a remote spot of the Indian Ocean... Throw nukes at it. You yes. don't need Superman. <laughs> also, and here's kind of a harsher in hindsight thing. Um, remember how the the world smashing bomb thingy, the world maker, was making yeah. those big waves of gravity in Metropolis and yeah. slamming stuff up and down. Yeah, that's pretty much how tsunamis are created. Congratulations, bad guys. Ah. You just subjected the Indian Ocean to like a about three or four hours of nonstop tsunamis. I wonder... Wow. I just made the... 
Did I just increase the, <laughs> the death toll <laughs> like a jillion times? Maybe. No. I am a horrible person. No, no, no. I'm not the horrible person. The filmmakers are these horrible people. They didn't even consider the people of the Indian Ocean. Well, all right. I'll, uh, I'd have to go into in, into tsunami physics because what happens is that fault occurs at the bottom of the ocean and causes this huge ripple effect sort of thing. Uh, yeah, you're telling me that something that lifts skyscrapers into the sky and slams them Who's down? Who's lifting cars? How many skyscrapers did it lift? Okay, oh, okay, the rubble of skyscrapers. Yeah, see? But still, that was a lot of force mm. behind it. It would not surprise me if there was at least minor tsunamis. Mm. And it was supposed to wreck the world. I am thinking there was plenty of force. Well, true, but it, it was going to take a while before it actually got to that point or something. Anyway, I did see someone point out Superman 2, because they're totally making Man of Steel 2. Uh, it's course. totally going to start off with Lex Luthor pointing out all the damage and saying, What the hell? <laughs> this guy's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be like, you know, brilliant in hindsight all of a sudden. My God. <laughs> Give him a bad toupee and a Hitler mustache. I want pictures! Pictures of Superman! He's a menace! <laughs> yes, we need J. Jonah Jameson and Lex Luthor teaming up to deal with all those costume freaks. <laughs> oh, that would be Do a it. very epic and unexpected uh, change of pace. Like oh that. my God, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, the, the movie in general, you know, felt fast, and it had those slow movements uh, with with the the flashback. But even then, the camera was shaking, so I could never really completely relax. When an oil refinery is considered a re when an oil refinery exploding is considered a relaxing moment, you. I, I meant more like you know Clark in the back of his house, and his dad is saying, "Oh, you have to tell not tell people you're Superman," you know. You have or, to not tell people you're Superman. I mean, that moment from or the... save my or save my fucking life with super speed. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I mean, yeah. I, I know it, Clark, I... I'm going to smile as I'm sucked into this tornado. Okay, see, here's okay, I get that's not really realistic. So here's how it go. Clark, <laughs> now I'm sucked into Oh god, help me! <laughs> Fuck what I said. Help me, <laughs> I'm going to die. That's another hissy right there. Also, um really quick, um I don't know if any of you watch programs on tornadoes. I do a lot because I like science. Mm -hmm. Although you don't have to like science in order to like tornadoes. But that's beside the point. Uh. Um, they've shown that stuff inside of a twister move at very unbelievably high speeds. Like, um, you've seen pictures of fence posts lodged through trees. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like, um, um, oh, okay, here's a... Oh, God, that's a telephone pole going straight through. Mm -hmm. you know, what should have happened is he got... Uh, pa Kent gets halfway to the car, and then, like, a piece of straw at, at 500 miles an hour just blows his head off. I thought, I thought, I mean, going more to the thematic side rather than the laws of physics side, I thought it was a little odd that he gave his life to save a dog. Uh, I mean, if it was a child, maybe I could see that, but... Yeah. Let's, I mean, as much as we like pets, and we're going to get letters for this... <laughs> We have pets. You, I have pets. Anyway. Yeah, yeah I, have, I used to have pets, yeah. but you leave the dog. A human life is more important than a dog's. Uh, and is all, a human life is also more important than uh, concealing your secret identity, which has already been halfway revealed three times when you saved the bus and did all these other things. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 so, Dude, uh, the guy who runs, the guy who knows what you did, um, runs the IHOP <laughs> in town. <laughs> He freely gives this information <laughs> away to anyone who asks. <laughs> we saw this yeah. earlier in the movie. Yeah, we did. Your it's... secret identity is already compromised. Yeah, it's. I can see what they were trying to do at that moment. The idea of his, his dad dying to protect his son's secret identity and how important that was. But you... and, 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 and it would have worked if it was legitimately important. Like, let's say they had some sort of some some method. Oh, if we only knew who Superman was, the the government has this kryptonite thingamajig, and we could grab him and throw him in jail, right? Mm -hmm. Like if that was somehow set up, then it would be like, oh, son, I'm sacrificing myself so you can be free and have your life. And I'd be like, oh, wow, I get that. Wow, that's amazing. But now it's like I'm sacrificing myself. Why? So he retains his secret identity. Half an hour later, he gives up his secret identity, or he gives up his his he 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 surrenders himself as Superman, which is the same thing, really, you know, as far as his own personal life is concerned. And uh, and and what? He's a public figure now. I mean, it's not important for him to be secret per se. 
Yeah, and plus, Superman is still depicted as being incredibly freaking fast. Yeah, yeah. He could have grabbed Pa Kent and moved him like 30 miles away to where there is not a tornado. Mm -hmm. Oh, gone back before anyone had noticed he had gone. And then, like, later, retrieved Pa Kent and said, Hey, okay, Pa, listen up. You were trapped under a car, and that yeah. saved your life. Yeah. Or if you could go, like, around the side of that bridge and then bolt and do like a big circular thing and get Pa from the other side type of a deal, you know? However that works. Yeah. You could have saved Pa Kent. That sacrifice was meaningless. Yeah. Yeah. How do we... I don't know. You have to fix that somehow. But, uh... Yeah, that was weird. I mean, the only person who kind of gets defended is, is Ma Kent, really. Because, okay, I guess... It would, I don't know. Except the kid comes out anyway because of the IHOP guy. Lewis Lane finds out, you know, like yeah. Lois. You keep Lois. saying Lewis. I keep saying Lewis because, as Matt discovered last time we were talking, uh, I totally called it Lois, you know, Lewis and Clark, because of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Whom I totally thought that Lois Lane and Lewis Lane, as I called her, mm -hmm. and Clark Kent were named after those two people, uh, and therefore I thought that those two explorers that uh, Lewis was a woman. I always, I always assumed that, you know, wow, it's a very adventurous woman they had there. <laughs> and they already had Sacagawea. Yeah, that's true. They did Sacagawea. Um, but yeah, so that that didn't add up. And it's very important for that to add up when they're trying to go so serious and, uh, and, and, and so emotional, you know. So you're sort of like, yeah, uh, uh, something, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, you know it would be easier. How about you just don't do a sacrifice? How about Pa Kent just dies? Dies of a heart attack and, from and, eating too much food. Uh, or, or, okay, dies because uh, he's on, like, a vacation or whatever. He's in the next town over. Superman doesn't know that he's dead until, you know, the next day. And it's, oh, crap, I should have been there to save him. And you could have played on that, you know? And it's simply, oh, I didn't save him because I didn't know he was in danger. There was a car crash, you know, I was 30 miles away, whatever. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could have that. I mean, that. That's, that's the way they killed Pa Kent in, like, the comics, I think. Is it? Uh, there, there was, like, a giant monster attacking Metropolis, and Pa Kent had a heart attack while... Yeah, see, see you could do that. You could do that. While well, we're getting to, to monsters attacking Metropolis and Superman's general heroism, this was a thing that played on his discovering his destiny scene. He goes to the... The, it's sort of like a Fortress of Solitude, you know, the spaceship. It's, a, it's, that's a, in. it's the scout ship. With... It's the scout ship in the ice, which reminds me of the Fortress because it's Kryptonian and it's in some ice. Yeah, <laughs> and it's at the, like the North Pole or close enough to it. Yeah, it's Canadian soil, they said, but uh, which is the North Pole. Anyway. So he 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 has not known who he is all his life, but he knows he has superpowers and he's been doing this hero stuff. And he goes and he meets his his real dad, his biological dad in in hologram form, holograph, holo. Wait. What's it called? Uh, hologram. Hologram. Hologram, yeah, okay. On hologram form, and he tells him who he is, and he gives him the suit, and he's got the suit. And then, let's, let's draw this out. Where does he, what does he do next? Well, he does the exact same thing he's been doing all his life, except now he has a cape. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, he, I mean, he doesn't, even been, have a he doesn't even have a mask. Right, well, and, and he, 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 he's already been saving people. It's not like he gets his powers at this point. He's had them already. He sort of develops them in the next scene. He just like, learns, hey, you're from space. whoop de fucking do right. Here's the stupid outfit that your mom and I made. Yeah. And, and we saw Kryptonian outfits. I mean, the comics try to justify it by saying, oh, Superman's outfit is a rescue outfit. Oh, that's cool. By, like, um, uh, by Kryptonian standards. But we see uh krypton in the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. and one problem i have with it is mm -hmm. the same problem that i have for all movies that try to make things really realistic mm -hmm. they make everything beige because yeah, brown is dark and real dirty beige. and gritty and realistic we don't see blues we don't see reds we don't see a it's whole lot of nice yeah. primary colors if it was established that, oh, Kryptonians wore all these different colors to signify different positions in their society, yeah. but nope, it's all bronze and brown and gray, yeah. and yeah. it's very monocolored. Yeah. They, they don't have a whole lot of colorful outfits. So why was Superman's outfit blue, yeah. blue and red? I mean, I, I would yeah. I would question why um uh, a symbol for hope is identical for the English S. It's but, not identical. It's you know, it's, it's all. I mean, they, they, but let's I be honest yeah. here. 
it's a squiggly line. Yeah, it's a squiggly line, and and it's you noticed I noticed anyway that uh, the S is squigglier in this movie than it has been previously. Yeah, like they, they're they trying were trying to play up the it's an alien language, you know, it just kind of looks like an S, which is fine by me. I, I get that. Yeah, know? I mean that's that's understandable. Besides, it's an I S guess. in a freaking pentagram, not pentagram. You know, it's a S in a shape inside of a shape thing, so it makes it even more different. Um. But um, was it? okay, so that scene though, that scene. So he learns his desk. He learns who he is, but then he kind of does what he was doing already. Everything, the ways that scene could have, have worked and had the impact it was supposed to. Uh, number one, if somehow at, this is the moment where he discovers his powers, you know, I don't know how that would happen. But if it did, like, oh, now I have a new meaning. I have life. I have whatever type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, two, if. Uh, this was about overcoming some major mental block. Like he, he's um, in despair. Maybe he just got defeated or something. And then he meets his dad and he gets to become Superman for reals now, you know. And the the cape and everything would be symbolic of, okay, this time for reals. Maybe it know? was about um, uh, him always feeling like an outsider amongst the human race and always wondering who he was. Yeah. But that seems a little played out it it, se it seemed a little weak yeah i mean it because again he, he was already saving people and stuff you picked up a bus when you were 10 right and to the ex you picked up a bus when you were 10 and saved everyone's lives and to the extent that he had to hide himself previously he still has to hide himself right because he puts on the glasses at the end and i'm clark kent and i'm not going to tell anyone i'm superman so you're not like coming out really and be like this is who I am. <laughs> yeah, I know the guy wears blue. It, yeah, but uh, you know you're you're not like you know shedding your old uh, secrecy. It's just this. Wow, isn't that real? So cool. I have an awesome dad. Yeah. All right. Anyway, <laughs> and then we have to wait for someone to threaten the world because otherwise uh, nothing else is happening. I mean, what was the point of getting the costume actually? The point of getting the costume was so that they could have the high-impact action scenes without ripping his clothes off. That's dumb. That's really kind of dumb. Well, if they had him flying around in jeans and they didn't rip to shreds, you would be complaining about airspeed velocity. I would, but that's because <laughs> I'm a nitpicky bastard. <laughs> you know, um, I'm fine. Why did they not include the super underwear? Oh, come on. <laughs> the super briefs. Yeah, I like the super briefs. I do not like the super briefs. Not not for if you're gonna go gritty. Not if you're gonna go gritty. That just looks silly then. Okay, uh, okay, in in a grittier thing, but I don't know. Maybe I don't want to look at Superman's junk the whole movie. You didn't look at his. What were you looking? I was looking at the action scene. Uh, Who's gay now? No, I'm kidding. Okay, I will hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I seriously am kidding. It's. Not. Uh, uh, I don't hate but, gay uh, people. <laughs> But, um, yeah, and his attitude, too. This is the thing we, we touched on earlier. His ideals, you know, he's saving people. This is all very Superman. But the the tone he has when he does it, you know, in this movie, it's just sort of this more grim-faced look, sort of. Kind of like, I have to world. do this, rather than I choose to do right, this. Well, in, in the old, so Superman, he, he is this very, uh, Christopher Reeves. This, Superman is happy. Well, yeah, not, I mean, not like I mean, okay, giddy, not, not but like he giddy, this... but but like um, Superman has this cool big brother feel to him. Yeah, like, like you would expect him equally to to beat the hell out of Lex Luthor's latest giant Evangelion robot monster of doom. Yeah. But at the same time, you'd also expect him to like get up from get up, smooth out his hair, mm. um, reach down and and say pick something up out of the debris, walk over to a little girl and say, excuse me, Susie, I believe this is your right, little doll. Right. It fell out of the apartment when, right. you know, his death ray blew out the window. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of guy Superman is. He's the guy who would, who would just walk up to you and say, hey, right. how's it going? By the way, um, it looks like your heart's having a little bit of trouble, minor yeah. palpitations. Yeah. You should get that checked out. Oh, uh, and say hi to, to Chet down at the diner for me. Thanks. Yeah, pretty much. He, I, he, I, he's I, kind yeah. of a combination of wise mentor guy and mm. every man. But he, he had this ease of authority, I hope one critic called it. I said, yeah, that was the phrase I give it. He was very confident with the fact that he is badass, but that's okay. You know, but he's not showing off. He's just like, hey, I'm Superman, and, you know, let me have... But you remember, I did, I did not like Superman Returns. But I remember... Yeah, it was okay. At, when, he, when he took... But there's a, that airplane was crashing, and... Mm -hmm. uh, he, like, brings it to the ground in the middle of, like, a football... No, it was a baseball stadium. 
Um, but anyway, everyone's okay. And before he takes, before he leaves, he's like, I hope this doesn't dissuade you from flying an airplane. Statistically speaking, it's the safest way to fly. <laughs> <laughs> the safest way to travel, right? You know? And it was, yeah, that would be a Superman type of thing. Like, you know, public service announcement now that I've saved you. Yeah, I'm just a cool guy. And, and I could also see him... Okay, there was once a comic uh, based on the Superman animated series comics. Mm -hmm. Lex Luthor was trying to get a feel for Superman. Because mm -hmm. in the comic, he was... In the comics, based on the animated series... Based on the comics, based on the <laughs> my brain. There's a word for that. No. Um, confusing. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there, no it a, is. There's a TV but, trip um, for like based on the eventually based on itself. Um, but anyway, so in the in this comic, uh, Lex Luthor creates a new hero, Superior Man. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's real original, that Lex. Yep. But um, uh, and so he does a better job at saving the city than Superman ever does. But Superman just keeps doing what he's doing. He he goes around, he helps save kittens from trees, <laughs> he helps clean up the roads, yeah. and Superior Man eventually goes over and mocks him, wait, aren't you upset that I'm uh, taking all your kills? So to speak. Yeah, he's, saves, he's not actually killing. Taking your saves. Uh, take, uh, stealing your job? Oh, no, I'm, as long as I'm able to help people. Yeah. And Superior Man goes I nuts because it's... Like, Superior Man goes nuts because it was actually Metallo the whole time. Oh. Wait, who was actually Matal the whole time? Superior Man. Oh, okay. I thought you said Superman was Matal the whole time. No. I was like, who are the Matal is saving kittens? No, and I, was, and I just realized that goes... <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Hello, kitten. Open my chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tree is gone. The kitten is saved. The kitten's dead. <laughs> well, it's not the tree anymore. I count that as a victory. <laughs> oh, we should do comics. We would be. We would a... have the worst superheroes ever. They would try to do so much good, but they would just wind up <laughs> destroying the world. There you go, yeah. No, I, I was going to say, you just realized that that sort of, oh, I'll just save the kitten's attitude fits in so well with the Clark Kent personality. The dorky glasses and like, well I just wanted to save this kitten, you know, you know. Like yeah, I don't know. And he and he wouldn't he wouldn't whine about it in Superman form, but it's still this basic good nature type of thing. And he's either the do the dorky good natured or he's the big brother Superman good natured. But it's mm -hmm. the basic, hey, it's gonna be okay type of feeling. Uh, Superman Returns lacked that feeling. Superman felt very dark and Wait, very serious. Which point returns or Man of Steel? Man know? of Steel. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, in Man of Steel, he felt more like it was... A, I don't know how to describe it. Or how he I know... He felt more it, angsty. It, I think that would how I'd say it. it uh, he, he was saving the world, more, but he was angsty about it. It felt more like an obligation. Yeah. Oh, For, it, it, not, not in the sense or of Or it felt like, like he considered it more of an obligation. Like, um... Having his uncle be Ben Parker and having him give him the with great power comes great responsibility speech would not have seemed out of place in this continuity. Hmm. And so he considers it his responsibility, no matter how much he may not like it or not. That would fit in so well with the Pa Kent died on the next town over and I wasn't there to save him feeling. Yes. That's basically the Ben Parker right there. You know, type of, oh crap, I should do better. It felt, yeah, it wasn't obligation to the sense of like, oh, these stupid humans, I guess I have to save them. But it was obligation sort of in a sense of, this is not a reason to smile. It was that sense. It was, I'm saving the world. I did it. Okay. It wasn't like, hey, everybody. You know. And I can see, and that's what I said at the very beginning of this, I can see the idea of going for grit, but with Superman, and, and with the grit I've already seen in recent movies, I would kind of like to see the old school pop in more, you know? That, that yeah, the I big mean, brother yeah, attitude. It'd okay. be kind of fun. Call me crazy. I liked John Carter of Mars. I loved it, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people didn't go see it. No. It was... part of, I think part of it is Disney's problem because they were... Re... The marketing. Yeah, they, they changed the title from John Carter of Mars to John Carter. So you didn't even know who... The... Wait a minute. Isn't that the guy from Terminator? Uh, yeah. But, yeah, the... Or is the that movies... Connor? Wait. Yeah, it was Connor. Okay. Uh, John... <laughs> uh, well, anyways, uh, John Carter of Mars, Connor which... Of Mars. I mean, seriously, just calling it John Connor? Carter? Yeah. That, that just sounds like... You know, Adventures of Average Joe in, the, it sounds like, no, it in could, the suburbs. That, that could be, yeah, that could be like a drama or something. You don't know what it is. Yeah, but, um, and, and there's a billion dramas out there, but yeah. it, it was a great movie, partially because it harkened back to the old, the old-timey feel. Yeah. It, it, it felt cliche, but that's because it, well, it might, John Carter yeah. was one of the things that inspired the creation of Superman. Right, and the, it's, yeah. it's from the old action serials that inspired the generations of classics that yeah. came to follow. yeah. Like the, and, and, and the thing with John Carter is it also mocked its own cliches. You know, yeah. It worked so well. So it wasn't dumb. It was like, oh, this is 
you know, it, they know us. They know what we were. How many times did we expect something? And they guy, they guy reads TV tropes, and he was like, "Ah, wait, no, the other day we're riding off to save the princess." Oh wait, wrong town. Oh crap! And then the guy, and then <laughs> one of the aliens the smacks him across the back. There, how awesome is that? An alien actually smacks you on the back of the head because you were a dumbass. Right, right. As opposed to like the the over perfect hero, you know, like never gets smacked, or the the escapist at the beginning. Or it, it, he he like he beats up two dudes and then like the marshals or whatever coming in and I I in half a second full Sherlock Holmes style speed thinking I went oh, okay this is the part where he's even more badass and he fights the next three guys that he and then just bang he gets knocked out in the first blow and then he's like he, you know handcuffed in the guy's office and then is like oh well I guess I'll just Duh! and he jumps out the window and then he's handcuffed again and like his legs are shackled or whatever and they do this like four times <laughs> like he doesn't know what movie he's in and he thinks this is the time for the escape scene I love that yeah that's a great thing <laughs> you know? but that's the kind of attitude we want we want we don't want a, gr- sort of, a yeah, gritty yeah. movie what, is, what want... is the word for it it's this sort of I'm gonna say adventurous optimistic. but optimistic at the same time joyful there's a word for it somewhere um what do you call it when it's like it's like laid back and exciting at the same time you know I mean it's laid back in the sense of hey we're having fun with this but it's exciting it's, in it's like avengers of, it's like avengers yeah avengers, avengers was good you had this laid back attitude about it especially mm-hmm. the, the slower scenes which mm-hmm. superman lacks yeah but <laughs> um it had these laid back scenes where you could where like it had tony stark wandering around being silly Tony Stark but at the same time there was this undercurrent of tension throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing so it was exciting and, and, and certainly more moments of humor too yeah, yeah. Uh, so how do you <laughs> in Superman the attitude wasn't one where you could have walked up to Superman and said so how do you keep your world destroying anger under control uh, yoga therapy aroma, <laughs> uh, candles big bag of weed <laughs> but that's the kind of movie Avengers is yeah. that's the kind of movie I wanted to see with Man of Steel yeah, yeah. maybe some light humor you know what would have been great? Like, um, uh, joking with the military guys. No, actually, no, that would have, wouldn't have worked in, in this. Yeah, military guys are kind of stirred by by default. Um, oh, yeah, didn't you support Obama? No, no, I supported uh, McCain. Oh, sorry, I voted for Obama. Just like something, just a little one-liner or two like that. Just yeah, saying. I can see that, I can see that. Uh, yeah, not like when the soldiers are mourning over their dead. Yeah. Like, did the soldiers even mourn over their dead when, no, like... No, we got to... We just skipped to the end. It was yeah, like... Yeah, I mean, it, some people make fun of, like, movies by saying, Oh, we don't need slow scenes. Just make it all action. Well, yeah. we've seen what that movie is. It's Superman... It's, it's Man of st- Steel. Well, no, even... Mo- to, to the king of that, though, has to be, um... Ah, oh, I forget what was it called. It's a one-word title. The guy has been poisoned, and... If his adrenaline level drops... I think it's like Crash or something. Is it Crash? Was it Crash? Yeah. yeah. If his adrenaline level drops, then, like, he'll die. So the literally the whole movie is one actress. I've never seen it. Just, like, that sounds insane. Yeah. Also kind of stupid, but... Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> that was um, the point. Yeah, so I think we've said everything we can say on Man of Steel. Yeah. What do you think? Um, pretty much... Yeah, there are some things we weren't sure about, like, how... Uh, Why would the atmosphere of Krypton, or being aboard the spaceship, may nullify right, his powers? Right, exactly. What? Especially if you can see the sun from your ship. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't just the sun. It's like the New 52 idea that's like, oh, several parts of Earth's atmosphere help out. I think it's easy just to but say the sun. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, that's how it's been since they first revealed the origin of his powers. Okay? Uh, I guess it is, yeah. Yeah, Superman gets his powers from Earth's yellow sun. And the, that just goes in perfectly with the purity, optimistic thing that Superman is. The sun is his power. He's a plant. He's a plant. <laughs> and, and not like, okay, and I don't want to get back to Gritty again, and not like a, a Cylon where, you know, they're yeah, plants. No, no. Entirely different plant. Um, or Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, you know, and there was like, how did they not find the Kryptonian USB stick that uh, Lois had when they brought her aboard Zod's ship. Like, you've taken a prisoner aboard, like, maybe search her pockets. I think that would be standard procedure. That seemed a little yeah, odd. Yeah, uh, search her pockets. Um, no. Put them in a scanner to say, oh, yeah. does this person have any artifacts on them? Right, well, they, 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 they searched her mind and they didn't find anything. <laughs> like, how does that work? The only way I can think that would work is if they're like, she's so stupid that, that you get one of those comic moments where... Where people are searching people's minds and they're like, I can sense nothing, it's a great empty void! Because this person is so yeah. dumb, they have nothing going on in their heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but we know that can't happen because A, gritty. 
B, um, you know, Lois they said, isn't dumb. Yeah. Well, they got information out of her mind. Oh. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Like, what exactly? I guess they got the information of the sil- Ma Kent's house, but nothing else for some reason. The silliest scene in the movie: <laughs> Superman that? standing on a field of skulls. Uh, was, and I just had to ask uh, him as we were exiting the theater. Someone had to have prepared this beforehand <laughs> to make this image. Yeah. Someone was like, "Hmm, okay, like but are there it. enough skulls?" I mean, there's a like, lot of skulls, but are there enough? Like, there's a there's a graphic designer on Zod's ship who's been working on this for a while. <laughs> okay, okay. No, no, no. I want the slide a little taller, and we, we need a little more skulls. <laughs> oh, some fire. Skulls? More skulls. Right, and Zod... Put some skulls on the swings. I mean, Zod could have just... Hey, you... Zod, Shut up, more skulls! Zod just could have asked him. Skulls. He could just take him on board and be like, Hey... I need this codex. Could you give it to me, please? I'm gonna go make Krypton on Mars. Which, by the way, they did not explain why he needed to make Krypton on Earth. I guess it's just because he's a dick. Really, or, it's for the evils. Or like any other star system. Yeah, they, they, so they had cr- colony Kryptonian colonies in other star systems, right, which for some reason weren't terraformed, or everyone dies on them. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, like what? Did as soon as Krypton died, did like everyone die? I was confused. Like, did they abandon those colonies centuries ago, or did they like have the colonies at the time of Krypton's death, and then everyone dies at that moment? You know, I don't know. There are hints in the comics that Krypton kind of. Um, uh, became very isolated after a while and started withdrawing more of its resources inwards. So, but, you know... Possibly. Yeah, I but, mean, I mean, the, I mean why did everyone death. die in the colonies, though? Like, they, okay, but goodbye, Krypton. We're gonna do some farming over here because we have a world builder, so clearly we can make that happen. Yeah, <laughs> and, and another thing. Um, like, what? apparently everyone died really quickly. Yeah, yeah, but by the people, time Zod gets there, yeah. By the time Zod gets there, everyone's dead, but they're all lying around. That's true, though. It's, no one was buried, no one was prepared. I mean, I don't think the Kryptonians were the kind of people who just said, well, there's a corpse there, just leave it. <laughs> I mean, unless, like, freaking... Look, if it's some Kryptonian somebody... burial rite or something, yeah. they were either attacked or they all died randomly for no goddamn reason. <laughs> The plot is killing us! I mean, granted, there are comics that suggested that the Kryptonians were kind of ahead of a brutal empire at one point. Yeah. And it might have been, like, others trying to get their, their revenge on the Kryptonians. So maybe that's a sequel hook. I hope it is. Otherwise, it's just a hanging thread, you know? Yeah, so why not another planet, Zod? Um, you have terraforming technology. Yeah, um, you and you have, you have the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no freaking, it's not the Codex you, of Ultimate Superman Wisdom. Superman would give you the Codex, you know, or, or plug himself into the thing if you asked nicely and used some other planet. Also, why was the Codex skull-based? I don't know. Was... Why was it skull-based? <laughs> I mean, you have USB technology. You have well, some... you have like a jillion different ways of storing information. The, the you best, have like the liquid yeah. metal thing. Uh, so the best... the best way we have to store data, skulls. The, 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 uh... That's why the guy wanted so many skulls. <laughs> oh. He was designing his next generation computer. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So the best explanation I found is that the skull actually is a Kryptonian USB drive that's just shaped like a skull because they thought it looked cool. The other way I can imagine it is magic. Yeah, that too. And, you know, normally that would be just a dismissal of how badly this movie is plotted. Mm. But let's be honest here. <laughs> uh, magic does exist in the DC universe. We no, have Zatanna. But yeah, but we not have... necessarily the Man of Steel verse. We'll find out. But, uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, we do have there's a town. Well, they have Wayne. Uh, they have Captain uh, Marvel. To be precise. They have Wayne in a uh, Wayne Tech satellite in the movie. Yeah, but they didn't have a Zatanna Tech satellite. You know what I'm saying? They didn't. Zatanna isn't. A... I know they didn't establish magic though. Is what I'm saying. They only referred to other science based thingy magics. Well, Assuming yeah. you count a Green Lantern ring as science based, which is really halfway there anyway. <laughs> it's it, it, Green Lantern rings are kind of Clark's third law. Yeah, and Clark's yeah, law. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, now are we done? <laughs> well, I could rant about uh, Superman Returns. <laughs> uh, that's a different movie. What a terrible, evil scheme. It was one of the worst evil schemes I've ever seen. You remember that? Yeah, but the Lex Luthor played a very good role, despite that. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah. But he... As good as you're playing that role, when you're sitting there playing cards... With nothing better to do with your time than wait for Superman to come back and vanquish you for the movie's final act. 
I mean, that was just silly. <laughs> what was his plan? He's like, I'm gonna make land. Okay, land. Why is, how is that gonna hurt anybody? Oh, well, I'll have advanced technology. Oh, I get it. It's not land. It's a fortress. It's got super technology. He makes it. It's a hunk of rock. Made of kryptonite. Made of kryptonite, which is only deadly to Superman. The Marines... Oh, uh, no, nope. that is, that okay. is not true. Deadly to kryptonite. Who else is okay. it deadly to? Humans. Crypt yeah, kryptonite all right, all is right. actually deadly to humans. Very However, slowly. However, yeah. Very it, slow. It, it takes a very long period of time I to remind be... you that Lex Luthor is a human too, so great, he's killing himself now. Yeah, and that ch <laughs> a chunk of radioactive rock that big sitting on the Earth, he'd pr practically irradiate the whole planet. Right, right, but he, okay, he frig he makes the thing, it makes like this one tidal wave, but then, then, what is your plan, Lex? What is to stop the U.S. Marines from bombing the crap out of you? <laughs> that should be the history for Superman Returns. Is, and now that I have this land... <laughs> I mean, there's no civilians in the way or anything. Dude, there's it's no the hostages, same... you know? Okay, Linkara covered this same problem. It, th there was this, like, um, uh, comic that he reviewed. It was like a, a public service message comic about how reading is awesome mm -hmm. and it's it's about how batman goes to canada to try to stop the joker who has a plan to take over all of north america because he has a uh, piece of paper that says that his ancestors own all of north america <laughs> like car basically pointed out the problem with this okay this is actually a plan that i like because it's kind of silly and not like psychopathic like the joker sometimes is portrayed as yeah. but your army consists of these six guys <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't care. <laughs> you have six humans. Maybe if you had the Sinister Six as your backup, yeah, yeah. maybe that could have worked. But right. um, and and or or if Lex had that advanced technology, which I don't know how how someone writes that in the script and then someone else reads it and they go, "Hey, did you notice the advanced technology never shows up and no one ever mentions it ever again?" Uh, the advanced technology, I think, was just the growing crystal, which no, no, was he, he, entirely used up when he but, made the island. No, but what he said was, "I'll make it and then I'll have advanced technology." Like that was the second step somehow. And no, no, it, that was the third step. The yeah, second yeah. step was question marks. Yeah, that's true. No, 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 it was the fifth step. The Wait, hang on. First step was make the island. Second step was question marks. Third step was underpants. And the fourth step was profits. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and then, so Superman shows up and just, like, lands on the thing and doesn't even, like, you know, take precautions or whatever. And Lex stabs him. Does he chop off his head? No. He throws him in the ocean where he can swim away. And oh, he has a chunk of kryptonite lodged okay, in no, his sleeve. But, but he can still get rescued by the kid in the helicopter or whatever it was, right? Yeah, why stab him in the side? Stab him through the eye. Go for the brain. Go for the brain. Okay, I will grant that they don't know, and that Lex might not know Kryptonian anatomy. I would guess the brain is in the skull. Just a guess. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's like a decentralized... But if I had to guess. If it was a decentralized nervous system, you know, it might be best to just stab in the center mass. It would also be great. Just keep stabbing all day long. <laughs> don't throw him off the edge of anything. Or throw him off the edge into something that will stab him more. <laughs> like throw him into a lava pit or something. That Lava doesn't stab people. I know, but that was, it's also dangerous. Okay, spice Yes, yeah, knowing Superman, he would have survived long yeah. enough for the kry kryptonite to melt out of him. Right, so he gets rescued. This comes the worst part of the movie. After he gets rescued, which is okay that he mm -hmm. gets rescued. Well, Super Lex Luthor was dumb, but him, he gets rescued fine. Then, 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 Lex, Lex and his gang are on the island playing cards. And they have nothing to do! <laughs> there is nothing better to do with their time except literally wait for Superman to come back and kill them. <laughs> maybe he's, maybe he, maybe like one of the guys is uh, OCD. Lex, <laughs> Lex, we need to do our poker game, but I need to finish the play. Lex, we're doing this poker game. Uh, we're doing this poker game, man. And then, and then, my schedule uh, has that we have a poker game, and if we don't, I swear to God, I will pop your head off. Pretty much. Okay, okay. <laughs> it would be great if Superman comes back. Yeah. You see, Lex Luthor. <laughs> he's just mouthing it. Help me! He's crazy. <laughs> Playing poker game. Uh, you know what? You know how that could plan could have worked. Huh. Lex could have just taken the growing crystal, huh. and then said, "Hey, guess what, world? Um, I have this magical crystal that ha will enable me to make limitless farmland anywhere in the ocean that you want." Oh, Lex Luthor cut. Just, just, check. just sell <laughs> the. Do a Magrathea. Uh, hey, check yes, this guys yeah, in the galaxy. Yeah, Make Mag Magrathia, yeah. islands for people. That'd be nice, yeah. Yeah, like, um, uh, we have no more farming lands, Great Lex Luthor. 
Okay, hang on. I'm gonna shave me some crystal. I'm making a whittling motion with my hands, <laughs> yeah. or playing the, the wash drum. I don't know. No, it's fine. But, uh, anyway. but yeah, boom! And... Lex Luthor, savior of mankind. He made it so that we could grow crops anywhere on Earth. That'd be so cool. Okay, yeah. might be a problem with this the displacement of water, but yeah, or, or the content of the soil. That'd be interesting. He tries to get it, and it turns out it's just bad topsoil. Nothing grows there. He's like, uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> No, I was going to say, in one of the the biggest examples of strong as he needs to be, as I've ever seen, Superman, in his first encounter, lands on the island, walks around for a couple of minutes, and he loses all his powers. Superman, in his second encounter, goes beneath the island, lifts the entire thing into space, and somehow doesn't lose his powers in the process. He does faint at the end, and that was kind of cool and dramatic. But the entire island into space, and it's made of kryptonite? Are you kidding me? He and should have lost his powers, like, halfway to the island from the... Right, right. Sure, get Green Lantern and Wonder Woman on this. <laughs> or And the other thing, he lifts it, it looks like it's straight up, and then he faints. Where is the island going to go now? <laughs> oh my god, that would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he fades his land. Oh, thank god, I'm okay. Oh, uh, just like green speck the... <laughs> and then this thing the size of Central <laughs> Park just lands on him. <laughs> it's like Looney Tunes. <laughs> and like Nukes okay. Metropolis, too. With the you, know what's the really you know what's really sad? Uh. Um, really, really sad. This movie is supposed to be a continuation of, like, the, the earlier Christopher Reeve Superman movies, right? Yeah, Returns is, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Superman 4, he moves the moon because it's in an inconvenient <laughs> location. Yeah. Superman could have picked up the entire mantle of the Earth and <laughs> chucked it into space. Says he didn't even need to be connected to the... To be in contact with the island for more than a few seconds. You just go have him go into there uh, yeah, yeah, and bench press yeah. it into the fucking moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this shouldn't have been a continuity. They were right to do a reboot, though they made the reboot readier than we wanted, so. Uh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. well uh, I guess this has been our attempt at reviewing a movie. Yeah, it took us only an hour and 12 minutes. We're pretty efficient. Well, we, we also. <laughs> poked fun at other stuff too yeah but, but still yeah. Uh, comment if you have a th theory on what we should name ourselves and the person who name who suggests Poop Von Poopenstein we will kill you <laughs> okay, oh come whatever, on yeah, oh come yeah, on you uh, know that's, that's way above the threshold of the maturity of many people on the internet uh, that is myself included entirely entirely a thing to consider alright so uh, thank you whoever did listen to this under what context we don't know we don't even have a website yet or anything we just recorded a thing and we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.